Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. There is a Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to type in your questions to our presenters at any time. If you do have a question for a specific college, be sure to mention the college within your question. Your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is also just one of many sessions happening today, so be sure to sign up for additional ones as well. This presentation is also being recorded and will be available at the same site where you registered within about a week. Now I'm going to turn it over to our first college of the day, and that's going to be Champlain College. Thank you. And I'm just going to set up my screen here for one second. Great. So hopefully, folks, you can see my screen there. Uh, my name is Liz Van Luling, and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Champlain College in Burlington, Vermont, so East Coast. Thanks so much for spending your Sunday with me, learning a little bit more about some of the different college options you have. Uh, Champlain is a smaller school. We're about over 2,000 undergraduate students. We come from 40 different states and 18 different countries. One of the benefits of being in Vermont this year was that uh, we had pretty low COVID numbers for a long stint there. So we were actually welcome, we were able to welcome about a third of our class back to campus this fall. Um, and the other students were able to take, you know, part from their home experience and still get the same classroom um, instruction. So we did a hybrid remote learning. So I'm gonna go through a couple slides here today with some information about Champlain. Also feel free to use the Q&A function if you have any questions for when I'm done. So uh, just to give you perspective about where we are located, we are up in Burlington, Vermont, the northern quadrant of the state. Um, we do abut all of the New England states and you can see the Adirondack Mountains across Lake Champlain from our campus. So some great sunset views for sure. I also like to share that we have an international airport about three miles from campus, so it's easy to fly here. We also have a train station, a bus depot, so it's easy to get to all of the major cities across the Northeast, which definitely makes uh, a great experience socially and also for internships potentially. We also have some satellite study abroad campuses in Dublin, Ireland and Montreal, Canada. So that's a great experience once you get to that stage in your college experience and you want to go abroad and we encourage students to even intern while they're abroad. So I want to tell you a little bit more about the campus experience to give you that visual. So our first year students actually live in 20 renovated Victorian homes and they're interspersed in a neighborhood in Burlington. So again, we overlook Lake Champlain. So in total, our campus is about two major blocks in the neighborhood. We do have some off-campus housing, two blocks down the road, where our upperclassmen students are living in apartment-style housing. So each year of your Champlain experience could be a unique residential experience. So something to think about. At Champlain, we have 30 career-focused majors. If you've ever researched us before, this is your first time, you'll hear something called the upside down curriculum. Basically, we've taken the traditional liberal arts curriculum and thrown it, thrown it on its head. So our students actually start out in their major focus or undeclared, you know, trying two different majors in the first year so that you can get that gut feeling if it's the right fit for you. The idea with this is that you'll be better prepared for internships throughout your four years. It also means that you get direct experience with faculty who are practicing in the field much earlier than some of your peers. And it means that you can really focus on what you want to do with your major, not just, you know, get one. So to give you perspective here, I'm only going to touch on a few different majors because of timing, but would love to chat with you further about your college goals. We were founded as a school of business way back when. We have a customizable business degree with great concentrations like activist marketing or business for good. So definitely check those out. In our education and human studies programs, uh, social work's a big one, criminal justice. We have a law program that actually maps to a post-grad law degree. For our communication and creative media, we have an award-winning filmmaking program. We have a great broadcast media production program as well. In the information and technology sciences, digital forensics and cybersecurity are super popular. We have grant funded research going on on campus right now that students are taking part in. 
And we also have our game studio. So five game development majors in game art, game design, game production management, game programming, and game sound design. So pretty cool there. I do want to kind of reset and talk about some of the, you know, opportunities here for applying to colleges. Every school is going to be a little bit different. Uh, for us at Champlain, we are on the Common App or we have a Champlain specific application. Big thing to know about us is that we are test optional and we have been for four years. So this is nothing new for us. If you can't get, you know, into an SAT or ACT, no stress, no worries. Um, we do award merit scholarship to students and that's based on the whole picture. So not only your GPA, but also thinking through your essay, who are you, you know, what's your interests, your activities, if you were able to really dedicate yourself to something in high school, or you just have an interest, or maybe you're on TikTok, that's also an interest now. So, you know, whatever it is that makes you unique and you, we wanna celebrate that with your merit scholarship. And then in terms of financial aid, we also encourage students to submit the FAFSA. So when you're applying, definitely apply for financial aid as well to see your options. And I know I'm running up on my time here, so I want to just leave you with one final thought, and that's, you know, that this year is a pretty unique year, um, and unfortunately, you may not have been able to get to many college campuses, but the virtual opportunities like this one have exploded. So definitely take advantage of all the schools that you're looking at. We've got a Champlain open house coming up where you can win Champlain swag, play some games with us, and then always you can join our daily information sessions as well. So thanks so much for listening to me. I'll drop my information in the, Q, uh, the chat function and uh, thanks so much. Wonderful, thank you so much for that presentation. Up next, we have University of Connecticut. Great, thank you so much. Um, okay, let's get my, okay. All right, great. So I hope you guys can see that. Okay. so. Um, Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Heather Schrang, I'm an admissions officer for the University of Connecticut and I um, cover the territories of Northern California, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, and Hawaii. So I'm really excited to be here today to tell you a little bit more about the University of Connecticut. Uh, so we are located in Storrs, Connecticut, which is in the northeast corner of the state. We are about an hour and a half south of Boston and about two and a half hours north of New York City. So we're really in the heart of New England. Um, our main campus in Storrs is our largest uh, campus. We do have four smaller regional campuses, which you can see indicated on the map there. Um, as I mentioned, smaller, also non-residential with the exception of our UConn Stanford campus. Um, but typically students coming from out of state, especially coming from um, the West Coast are going to be joining us on the main campus in stores. This is where we also have a majority of our undergraduate population with over 19,000 students located here. Um, across all five campuses, though, we are at about 24,000 undergraduate students. We're at about 30,000 students, including our uh, graduate student population, so we are considered a large institution. We are also a top 25 public university by US News and World Report. Um, and we're also an R1 research institution. So for any students, especially who might be interested in some STEM related fields, I think that's gonna be really important um, just because you will have opportunities to do research potentially as early as your freshman year, if that's something you would like to do, you can also get funded to do your own research. So some really unique and cool opportunities um, for you. Uh, at the university, we do have over 110 majors as well as over 320 minors and co concentrations across our 10 schools and colleges. Um, so our largest college on campus is our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Our two largest majors are located here, which is biological sciences and psychological sciences. However, um, our biggest draws for the university as far as why students want to study at UConn are engineering, business, nursing, our special programs in law, medicine, dental medicine, and education. We also have an agricultural school. So being that we have so many opportunities um, with, with majors, minors, concentrations, if you know what you want to do, great, you can jump right into that. But if you want to explore a little bit, you have lots of opportunity to do that as well. I also want to mention our class size, or excuse me, our 16 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which means that our class sizes on average are about 30 to 35 students, um, which is really nice to be able to have that at a large school. So you get the, the all the benefits of a big university when it comes to social life, but then you get still a smaller class size to be able to build connections with your professors and with your classmates as well. 
Um, at the university, we are D1. We have 24 Division I sports. Uh, we have 23 national championships across all of those uh, teams. We are most known for, for basketball, men and women's basketball. If you follow along any college basketball, you probably know about the Huskies. Um, so if you're looking for that big school spirit, a lot of hype, a lot of excitement around any of our sporting events and just kind of having a lot of school pride, you're absolutely going to get that at UConn. We also have over 700 clubs and organizations, whether it's academic related or just, you know, um, special interest. We have over 135 uh, education abroad experiences, obviously not right now due to COVID-19, unfortunately, but um, hopefully those will be resuming in the near future. And we also have five cultural centers located on our, on our campus as well. Um, so the next few slides are just kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what campus is like since you can't be here right now. Um, we are located in Connecticut, which is in New England. So we do get all four seasons, um, including winter. So it does snow. Uh, fall is by far my favorite season. Absolutely beautiful on campus. Um, we have a really nice downtown area, which is that top middle photo. It's uh, There's shops, restaurants, coffee shops. Uh, there's also a transportation depot, which is where you can hop on a bus to go up to Boston or down to New York on any weekend if that was something you wanted to take advantage of. Student life is very active, very vibrant. There's always something going on, whether it's our food truck festival, our Yukonic music festival, um, student performance, student club and organization performances, TED Talks. Um, we also have a lot of traditions on campus. So we have the homecoming carnival in the fall. We have Husky Thon, which is an 18 hour dance marathon, our one ton Sunday, um, ooze ball, which is the nation's largest mud volleyball tournament. So always something going on, big events, small events. So it's very easy to get involved and kind of feel that excitement and energy on campus. So moving into some more admissions focused information, we are located on the Common App and the Coalition App, but we also of course have a Yukon specific application as well. We require your official transcripts and a personal essay. Letters of recommendation are not required for admission, but very strongly encouraged. Um, they just really help with help us when we're doing our holistic review to get a little bit more an idea of who you are as both a person and as a student. Um, it says two letters of recommendation, but really because they're optional, it could be one, it could be five, it could be none. Um, it's not gonna hurt you if you also don't submit any. Um, also, we are test optional for the next two years. So we were test optional this past admission cycle and we will be for the next two. Potentially um, after that, we will continue possibly as well. Um, so if you want to submit them, you absolutely can. And if you would like to not, you can, no, no problem either way. Also, um, we do automatically consider students for uh, merit scholarship and honors when you submit your application. So no worries about that. Um, and I know I'm running out of time, but I just quickly wanna mention that we do not have early action or early decision at UConn, but we do have prior priority consideration deadline of December 1st. And then January 15th is our final deadline when everything must be um, submitted. And March 1st is our um, when all admissions decisions are released. Um, so that's my contact information, but I will also drop it into the chat just so that you can have a chance to write it down. And thank you so much. And I appreciate you listening to me discuss UConn. Thanks so much for that presentation. As a reminder to our participants, if you do have questions about anything you're seeing today, definitely don't hesitate to put those into our Q&A at the bottom. Up next, we have University of Arkansas. Good afternoon, everybody. I think you have my screen up there now. My name is Jennifer Fowler. I'm Associate Director for National Recruitment here at the University of Arkansas. And just to give you kind of a quick overview about the U of A, we are located in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, it's a great college town. We're very proud. We say the secret finally got out about Fayetteville. We've been recognized for five straight years as one of the top 10 places to live by US News and World Report. And we're in the heart of the Ozark Mountains. So we're also ranked a top 25 outdoor college town as well. So this next slide will show you some of the pictures. Uh, the Buffalo National River was the first federally protected river in the United States. And it's just about an hour's drive from campus. So our students can go rock climbing, mountain biking, we're actually hosting an international mountain biking competition coming up later this year. So a lot of outdoor activities, if you're interested, you also you are right there kind of in the heart of the United States. Um, we are in the Southeastern Conference as far as um, Division I athletics. We offer nonstop daily flights from both LAX and from San Francisco. And if you're wondering why, 
we actually have 325 Fortune 500 companies located within about a 25 minute drive of our campus. So because there's a lot of corporations there doing business um, on a daily basis, our little airport, which is about 20 minutes from campus, can take you anywhere across the United States. So some wonderful options there for you just to kind of get an idea. Our farmer's market on Saturday is always super fun. It's ranked top five in the United States. So that's always fun to go do too. Um, in terms of some things to do on campus, we do have a very large out-of-state student population. So 50% of our students come from outside of the state of Arkansas. So our goal is from students being 10, 15 hours away from home, we wanna get you guys connected to campus early. And we do that, of course, through student organizations. 400 plus student organizations, they're kind of split into um, multicultural groups, your religious groups, special interest groups. We have a club for twins, you name it, there's a club for it. Um, and then of course, Greek life. We have over 35 total fraternities and sororities and a third of our students do go Greek on campus. As far as academics, you'll see our student teacher ratio there at 18 to one campus wide. And we offer over 200 total academic degree programs. Um, we have seven academic colleges, our Dell Bumpers College of Agricultural Food and Life Sciences. We have the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design, a College of Engineering that's fully accredited. We have our Fulbright College of Arts and Sciences, a College of Education and Health Professions, and then our prestigious Sam and Walton College of Business, as well as the Honors College. Kind of give you an idea of what our students are studying. Our largest majors right now are actually all health science based. Nursing is our largest major. We offer all the way through the doctoral for nurse practitioner, followed by biology pre-med, coming at number two, and exercise science is actually our third largest major on campus. So anyone prepping to go on to PT or OT school, athletic training, things like that. Our top 10 largest majors are also gonna include marketing and finance in the business college, uh, psychology and English over in Fulbright, journalism, strategic media. So those are kind of some things that our students study. We're most well known for, of course, our business college. Um, we have four programs ranked in the top 25 there. Our design school of architecture, anywhere from top 10 to 15 in the United States as well. So some great programs. Um, I always like the question, what are we known for? Because it's a wide variety there. Your total population at University of Arkansas, 27,500. Um, undergrad population, if you're comparing that number, will be right around 23,000. We are now Actually recognized as one of the top five best study abroad programs. We send over 1,100 students um, all across the nation. We actually have a campus in Rome as well. So we've had our Rome campus. It's located six blocks from the Vatican. Uh, we've had it for 30 years and we actually teach core classes over there. So you can go over and take composition one, college algebra, you name it. But we have full-time faculty and staff that live there in Rome. And so you can use that as a study abroad option as well. And one of our proudest traditions, of course, is senior walk. Uh, we are the only institution in the United States that has such a program, but every graduate from the University of Arkansas has their name etched along the sidewalks. Over four miles long, 175,000 names strong. We have it mapped out for several more years, so you're good to go. Um, and my name is right there across from the Greek theater. So um, it's a very proud tradition to be part of. We have a wonderful scholarship program I wanna to touch base on. Uh, if you guys wanna screenshot this and save it for later. This of course helps a lot with our out-of-state student population. Um, you know, if you're not a, a resident of Arkansas, not a taxpayer, you're gonna get an additional non-resident tuition charge. This scholarship can cover 50 to 80% of that additional charge. It's gonna be based for the class of 22 only on your high school GPA. So if you apply, get admitted to the university, then you have the corresponding GPA, we will automatically be awarded this scholarship. So not even a separate application. Um, so anyway, there's some information on that. Again, screenshot that if you're interested, I can send it to you um, as well. But wonderful scholarship program there to lower your cost as well. And then just quickly some admission stuff and then our deadlines. We are on the Common App or we have our own institutional app. For the class of 22, we go live July 15th with decisions start going out on a rolling basis about mid-September, usually after Labor Day. Our priority admissions deadline you'll see is November the 1st. We have a separate scholarship deadline because it is an additional process. You have to apply to Arkansas to gain access to the additional scholarship application, and that will be due November the 15th. And um, that's my information. I've been with the university for 19 years now. I do reside in Dallas, but I oversee all of our out-of-state class. And if y'all have any questions, please do let me know. That's my cell phone. You're more than welcome to text as well. Thank you guys. Go Hogs. Thank you very much for that presentation. Up next, we have University of Louisville. Hello, everyone. I am V with the University of Louisville. I am based in uh, Los Angeles, California, and work with students from all Western US. Before I get started, I want to share with you a quick little fun video to showcase the uh, campus and students at U of L.
You walk in here and you don't know where you fit, but there are people from everywhere and everyone's looking. For friends, for fun, for their future. Jock, geek, troublemaker, nerd, blah, blah, blah. Forget your high school labels. Here, you'll live in a diverse world of individuals. The University of Louisville's student body is representative of the state, the country, the entire giant planet. Starting now, you get to define you. No, 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 you've got the R all wrong. With more than 200 majors available, we definitely have your major. Before you graduate, you'll go to more than 1,200 classes. And you'll traverse a park-like campus cultivated with more than 220 years of history. There's also lots of opportunities for internships, co-ops, international study abroad, and research programs to layer your education. UofL is about much more than academics. Explore the things you love. Join a club, volunteer in the community, get active in student government, start a study group for one of your classes. The residence halls are a great place to bond with new friends. Almost everyone loves their first roommate. <sighs> Almost. But don't roost in your room too long. We've got state-of-the-art workout facilities, a variety of intramural sports, and other fitness clubs that make it easy to stay active. Stop, that R is still not quite right. Back up. Rubbing the toe of the thinker during finals week will bring you good luck on your exams. On the other hand, don't step on the cardinal bird. It's bad luck, very bad luck. You're leaving the nest to explore new boundaries, but don't be confined by the boundaries of campus. Louisville is a vibrant city full of culture, music, parks, sports, and great food. So get ready to settle in and learn how to throw what you know, because by the time that you leave the University of Louisville, you'll be ready to... When you become an insider here, you're ready to make an impact out there. All right, hope you enjoyed that. So some reasons why students uh, come to the University of Louisville is because we're a great value. We are a medium-sized Carnegie Research University that's accessible, affordable with automatic scholarships, internship opportunities at Fortune 500 companies locally, engineering co-ops, which pay an average of around $34,000 where our students are in college. And we're lucky to also have our own dentistry school and law school with direct entry, as well as our own medical school and university hospital system. We were as well prepared as one can be to handle a big crisis like COVID-19 uh, because we are one of only 13 universities with a CDC lab to conduct pandemic research. This medical expertise allowed us to safely invite students back to campus, not only for visits, but also in-person classes. We're located in the suburb of Louisville, 10 minutes away from downtown, walking distance from a famous Churchill Downs and where Kentucky Derby takes place. The UofL has also been named the most beautiful campus in Kentucky. We're a residential university with ample housing options and tree-lined campus, which is very compact and walkable. And to end, it'll take you about 15 minutes total. So this is where the Cardinals eat. You'll notice how compact uh, and close by the residence hall, uh, halls are two restaurants and a very important Starbucks as well. These are some of our unique majors. We are an excellent school for pre-professional studies, students that want to go to medical school, dentistry school, et cetera. Uh, we have so many opportunities to get uh, a diverse set of observation, volunteer, clinical experiences that graduate doctoral programs um, uh, require. You can also major in anything and be pre-med or pre-law. These are most popular majors. I'll say for students from uh, the West Coast, we noticed that they're interested mostly in engineering, business, um, and nursing, and our nationally ranked sports administration program. If you want to kind of visualize what programs uh, in, entail at our university, you can take a look. You can search the catalog and find the flight plans. So if you're not sure exactly what you want to study, that's okay, you can come in as undecided. We have more than 216 majors to explore. So there's something for everyone. 
Speaking of applying, you can apply test optional or come in as a traditional uh, student with, uh, with submitted test scores. So this is up to fall 2022, there were test optional. It's uh, very possible that we can continue that, but we'll let you know. If you are applying to our flagship programs in the STEM areas like engineering, business and nursing, there is a pathway for direct entry for test optional students as well. And um, we are now part of Common App where you can of course apply directly to our website as well. All you need is your application to the university, whichever one you choose, um, high school transcript, test scores if you're using them or student involvement resume for uh, a, a scholarship consideration and $25 application fee. We're definitely open for a visit. So please come by in person if it's safe for you, um, or you can check out so many different virtual options by going to our website. This is my contact information. Thank you so much for tuning in today and go cards. Thank you so much for giving us that presentation. Up next, we have Belmont University. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, my name is Clayton Walker. I am one of the admissions counselors here at Belmont University. I work with the West Coast and the state of Ohio for freshman students. Um, so I'll be your contact. You can see my email and phone number on the screen. So Belmont is a medium-sized Christian liberal arts university located in the heart of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so just as Nashville is booming, so is Belmont. Um, we've grown almost tripled enrollment since 2000. Um, and now sit at 6,600 undergraduate students. So we really think that's the kind of middle, um, best of both worlds, having the resources of a larger university while also maintaining that small school feel with the average class size of 19 students and a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. So our faculty are really what make the experience. We are a teaching institution. Uh, so that means our faculty are there uh, really just to teach you. They've done this, they have that experience, and now they're back um, just to kind of share what they've learned for you. Uh, we don't have any teaching assistants or um, TAs at Belmont either, um, so you really will get to spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with our faculty members, uh, and they'll be the ones to, to get you the jobs after graduation. We do, our, we do have students from all over the country, um, from every state, and more than 28 countries. California is typically in the top 10 for where we get uh, students from. So quite a few students do come um, from all over California. You can see approximately 67% of our students come from outside of Tennessee. So I did mention we are in Nashville and Nashville is a, a great place to be right now. We're just about two miles south of the city center. Nashville uh, is Music City, which you've probably heard of, and our largest major at Belmont is Music Business. Uh, to kind of fit with that, Music Row is right across the street from Belmont. Uh, but our second largest major at Belmont is our nursing program. Uh, and we are a direct admit nursing program. So that means you'll be admitted to the nursing program um, when you apply to Belmont and you'll start clinicals your sophomore year because of that. Um, and then kind of your fun fact for Nashville, uh, we are the third coast for fashion. So right behind New York and LA, uh, Nashville ha has a really growing um, fashion uh, scene as well. Um, so we have over 100 majors across all the academic colleges you said. I mentioned fashion, so that's why we've added the Amore College of Architecture and Design. We're always adding new programs. Um, we're just announced. Um, we're starting an illustration and photography program in our Watkins College of Art. Music business is the largest major, but we have our top 10 majors really spread across most of our colleges. Um, so we have music business, we have nursing, we have commercial music, um, even business all in the top 10 uh, for our majors. We also just announced we're adding a medical school. Um, so we'll be having a teaching medical school starting um, in just a couple of years. Now it's moving on to admissions, right? You need to um, just submit an application and we just require three supplemental items. Um, so for the application, we have our Belmont application or the common application you can submit. And then we require just two or three supplemental items. We are test optional for fall 2021 and 2022. Uh, but if you do want to submit SAT and ACT scores, you'll see our scores, middle 50% of last year's applicants on the screen. Um, and we do super score both of those. Uh, past that, we just need an official high school transcript. Our average weighted GPA on a 4.0 scale is a 3.83. 
and then a school counselor recommendation. Um, so that school counselor recommendation is the only recommendation we need. So we don't need any teaching rec or teacher recommendations uh, from um, your teachers. And moving on, we've tried to keep it um, pretty simple at Belmont. So your application for admissions is your application for all scholarships at the university. Um, so you will receive your admissions decision about two weeks after you submit um, all those supplemental items. And then about a week after that, you will receive um, your general academic merit scholarship. And those range from three to $10,000. They typically start for students that earn um, at, kind of at or above those university averages. So at 3.83 GPA, um, and then the, if you submit test scores, uh, those test scores. And then for this top awards, you, you'll be considered for those as long as you apply by December 1st. So that's really our only deadline at Belmont. We don't have any um, other deadlines past that scholarship deadline. So you can apply anytime your senior year um, in the summer to be considered for admission to Belmont. And that's all I have. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and, and I'll stick around in the chat. Thank you very much for that presentation. As a final reminder to our participants, if you do have any questions, definitely feel free to use that Q&A chat and we're happy to assist. Our final institution for this session is Dallas Baptist University. Hello, everybody. My name is Nicole Mason, um, and I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment here at DBU. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit of information about um, Dallas Baptist University um, and would, if y'all just want to pay attention. So here we have, um, our location, and we're located in the Dallas area, the DFW area, really close to um, Fort Worth, Arlington. If you've um, ever been to Six Flags, um, there's a lot of really wonderful things here to do in Dallas, a lot of great shopping, coffee shops, um, and just a lot of fun things. We are one of the largest growing cities in the nation right now. A lot of young people living here, getting started, setting up in business. And so it's a huge, huge location um, for students to come um, and attend school and get jobs. Um, so it's a great place if you are looking at a place to move to if you're an out-of-state student and you're wanting to stay after those four years Dallas is a thriving location um, and a lot of students will stay here afterwards and get connected in the area a lot of great opportunities for networking um, we're about 15 minutes from the downtown area of Dallas and about 30 minutes from Fort Worth um, DBU itself we're located in the South Dallas area, um, and we have a little less than 300 acres of campus. So we're a smaller institution, um, but we have an awesome campus. Um, so here's a quick couple fast facts about DBU. We're a little less than 3,000 undergraduate students. So definitely one of the smaller schools um, that you've heard from today. Um, but that opportunity um, is just, an, it's an amazing opportunity for students that are looking for connections um, for that small community. And um, we have an average class size of 12 students um, with a 13 to one student to teacher ratio. So you're in small class sizes, you're getting to know your professors, you're not sitting in a um, 400 seat um, lecture hall um, hearing from a teacher's assistant, you're actually with your professor, they know you by name, and throughout the course of your four years, they still know who you are. Um, and so it's an amazing opportunity to get to know your professors um, and for them to see you in your studies and where are you struggling, how can they help you um, and feel like you're truly, truly known on campus. So um, that was one thing I really loved of having the smaller class sizes. Um, we have over 50 student led organizations here at DBU um, and over 99% of our students receive financial aid. One thing um, that you probably recognize in our name um, is Baptist. We are a Christian institution um, and we're very unapologetic about our faith. That is something that you're going to see throughout the entirety of your experience at DBU, through your academics, through athletic student organizations, just even meeting faculty and staff. Um, we have a very unapologetic um, Christian vision um, in what we're trying to create and establish here at DBU. Some on-campus living, we have um, dorms, apartments, brownstones, townhomes. Um, there's some um, wonderful places to live on campus. And actually, in order to live on campus, you must receive scholarships. Um, and so our scholarship opportunities are available only for students who live on campus. We have a wide variety of places to live. Um, you are welcome to live off campus, um, but we really want our students to establish that firm community with students of all ages, freshmen through seniors. So it is a requirement to live on campus if you want to receive 
receive scholarships. Um, our student life organizations, um, like I mentioned earlier, there's over 50 organizations here at DBU. Uh, we do have Greek life. However, it's not your panalytic um, organizations like you're going to see at a lot of um, big public schools or even some other private schools. Um, but we created all of our Greek life organizations here. They're all centered on service and on Christ as well. Um, and we have some intramural sports opportunities. Um, we also have a lot of different international organizations. Um, we have a huge international population at DBU with over 600 international students from 60 different countries. Um, and we have um, wonderful organizations where they can connect and integrate with our American students as well. So we get to know them. We have a lot of different international um, dances or um, international Pepsi break, what we call, and we have different snacks and we get to meet um, a lot of our international students and learn about their culture. Some fun traditions at DBU. Um, we have our first one, SWAT, that's Student Welcome and Transition Week. We do that immediately right off the bat before school starts. Um, we have carnivals and musicians come in. Um, we go and serve in the Dallas area and we really introduce our new incoming class into what life is like to be um, a DBU student. We have Mr. Patriot, um, homecoming, great pumpkin chase. Christmas tree lighting is definitely my favorite and spring sing is a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, a lot of our Greek-like organizations um, submit in for spring sing and perform before our student body and it's definitely one of the most favorite events on campus. Um, so here are some of our athletics, um, one of our other organizations. Um, we are a D2 school, however, we do have D1 baseball, um, and so our baseball team is well loved um, and definitely well known, um, and then the rest of our sports are D2, and then you can see over there we also have some club sport opportunities. Um, we do have scholarship opportunities for our athletic programs as well, so if that's something that you are interested in, we can get you um, in contact with our scouts and our coaches um, and get you um, some information um, and look and see what they can offer you. So a couple of our majors, definitely our top five um, are listed here. I wanna specifically highlight elementary education. We have been listed top 1% in the nation, both public and private schools alike for our elementary education program. Um, it's an amazing organization over, um, or all of our students who have graduated with our program have gotten jobs in the education field. So we are 100% uh, graduation to job rate for our elementary education program. We're definitely the school to go to for elementary education. Education. Um, we have business on there as well. One of the major uh, benefits is we are located in Dallas, so our business program is amazing. You can see psychology, Christian studies, health sciences. Um, I'm running out of a little time here, so I'm going to quickly talk about just our admissions requirements. Um, these are our scores. We are test optional for both the senior class and the incoming junior class of 2022. Um, and we will just need that information. These are the scores if you choose to turn in those tests. Um, and you can go ahead and apply here um, on our online application turn in those scores if you have them. If not, um, we will go test optional. We have a lot of wonderful scholarship opportunities for you guys um, once you have applied to DBU. So we'd love to help you find some scholarships in order to get to DBU. But thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you so much, everyone, for giving us more information about your respective institutions. I'm going to bring back all my panelists, and we're going to answer a question for you guys to hopefully give you a little bit more insight to their favorite things at their respective institutions. So the question I will be asking is, what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? And we're going to start with Champlain. Great. Um, so again, Champlain, located in Burlington, Vermont. Um, I share that because my favorite tradition is actually called the uh, Champlain Rail Jam. So our ski and snowboarding club uh, who go out to mountains every weekend have passes to those mountains and discounts to Burton snowboards and things like that. They do this big competition and it's got live music. It's got hot cocoa. The students from UVM and St. Michael's College come by and it's just a really fun time to see students do all these auxiliary, you know, tricks and things. So uh, definitely a fun time on campus. You come. Great, thanks. Um, so again, University of Connecticut um, in, in New England. Um, my favorite tradition, I, I mentioned it briefly in my presentation, um, it's Oozball, um, which again, is the nation's largest mud volleyball tournament. So usually we have about three to 4,000 students that participate in that every spring. And it's really fun. Um, even I just tell students, even if you don't want to play and you just want to go watch, it's fun to just watch everyone like slipping and sliding all around in the mud. So that's probably one of my favorite just because it's, it's really kind of funny. It's fun and funny. University of Arkansas. 
And our favorite tradition, of course, is going to be calling those hogs. We're the one and only Razorback mascot in the United States. Uh, Razorback fans love the hog call. Our opposing teams hate the hog call. Uh, probably gets on their nerves a little bit because we call the hogs. I call the hogs in my wedding. Uh, we are, of course, Division One SEC Athletics. We just won our 48th national championship yesterday with women's track and field. And so with that, I'd like to give us a good hog call. Woo, pig, suey, go hogs. University of Louisville. Hi all. Uh, one of my favorite traditions at University of Louisville is the uh, dance marathon that students put together. And um, this dance marathon is not only fun for the students, but also um, has a really good purpose. Um, they usually raise upwards of um, half a million dollars for pediatric cancer research. So it's really awesome. Thelma? Yeah, I think one of mine would be um, Blizzard on the Boulevard. Uh, so Belmont is on Belmont Boulevard and we have uh, a big kind of Christmas tree lighting and Christmas carols. In December, Tennessee doesn't usually see too much snow. Um, so you bring in snow machines. Um, it's just a good time for faculty, staff and students to all connect. In Dallas Baptist. Okay, one of my favorite um, traditions is just any baseball game that we can go to. There's a couple specific teams that we play um, that we have some fun um, with. When we play TCU, their mascot is the Horned Frog, so we fried some frog legs. Um, so that's really exciting and fun. And we also have an organization called the Regiment that every baseball game, they grill free bris brisket, which is total Texas. Um, and any student can go get some free brisket, some ribs, um, and go and enjoy the baseball game. So those are definitely Definitely my favorite traditions on campus. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today, both our panelists and our participants. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. And we would appreciate any feedback you can give us. This is also just one of many sessions happening today. So be sure to sign up for additional ones as well. And in about a week, you'll find this session's recording at the same site where you registered. Again, thank you for joining us and have a good weekend.